Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mission Employable Podcast. My name is Ryan West. I am your host. We have a tremendous show for you today. First and foremost, happy Veterans Day. Today is November 11th. Short little plug for it is also my birthday. I want to make sure I get that out there selfishly. So happy Veterans Day to all of our veterans and service members, families, everybody out there. We're also, before I get into this, I, I do want to remind everybody we're recording this on our video, which will go into our YouTube channel as well. So thank you to our guests for doing that. If you're not following us on YouTube, just search Iowa Workforce Development. And we've been celebrating Veterans Day all week long, and, and it kind of caps off with this episode, which I'm super excited to, to, to really get into because it, because it really can get employers co connected with all the things um, on veterans and just all of the great resources that you're going to hear about for the veterans and their families here in Iowa. Today, we're going to be here about ways that employers can connect with Guard and Reserve Service members and integrate them into the local workforce. We're also going to be talking about some home-based Iowa stuff as well. Today's show will highlight the organization called the Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve, or ESGR as it's commonly referred to, which is made up of volunteers to promote employer support of service members in the Guard and the Reserve. And we have a great component with Home Base Iowa, and we're going to talk about that as well. On the microphone with me today are two guests. We have Vicki Cody, who is the state chair of the ESG ESGR, and Becky is also with the Iowa Association of Business and Industry quick plug to them as well. They're great partners of Iowa Workforce Development, but along with so many employers in the state as well. And we also have Jathan Ciccone, who is the home base Iowa program manager here at Iowa Workforce Development. Jathan's been on several times before. He's become, like Jamie Norton, he's become regulars on the podcast. Thank you both for making time. Thank you for coming in and welcome to the Mission Employable podcast. We'll start with you. It's kind of awkward when we have two guests. We'll just start with, Becky, we'll start with you. Before we get into the questions, you know, we were talking before, obviously, you're familiar with Iowa Workforce Development, but th this, as we were talking, obviously, is passionate to you. What, what brought you to this role? And also, you know, what do you do at, at, um, at uh, the Iowa Association of Business and in Industry as well? I think we, that's, it's fair to get that out there, too. Thank you so much for having yeah. me today. I really appreciate it. Well, you know, uh, being married to somebody who served in the <laughs> National Guard for um, – well, we've been married 30 years now, um, and he served for 30 years yep. in the National Guard. So, you know, having a family member that serves, obviously that's yeah. what got me into being passionate about what I do for service members in general. Yep. Um, when he f deployed the first time back in 2003... Um, when he initially told me that if he was deployed, he'd be the last one to go mm -hmm. and was one of the first to go <laughs> after 9-11. Imagine that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Granted, it was Homeland Security, but, you know, at that time in, in our world, we had no idea what uh, what challenges that would, would be. Right. Um, I was working for a DO at the time and uh, was selected as a family programs director, or I'm sorry, family programs um, battalion um volunteer FRG yep. um, to uh, support uh, his units as they were deployed. Um, I ended up working for the family programs director um, at that time and uh, working with families before, during, and after deployments mm -hmm. um, and having two children of our own. And he deployed twice during that time. Yeah. Um, then it was time for a change in career and I moved to the ESGR um, full-time staff role yep. and was in that in a number of positions for 11 years and as you can imagine working with employers and service members on any challenges they're having with those deployments um, that were happening or understanding the laws that pertain to just simple drill weekends yep. or mm -hmm. annual trainings yeah. and the impact that has to employers and that service member yeah it's there's um, a lot yeah, yeah yeah so when I left uh uh, ESGR as a full-time staff four and a half years ago, I landed at uh, ABI yep. uh, as their foundation VP, and I've been there and really continuing to work with employers on a different level mm -hmm. and connecting them with business, our military leadership and across the state. Well, we're, we're, they're lucky to have you. Thank you for everything you've done um, related to all things veterans. And we hear that a lot about how, you know, the family member, the spouse gets connected in and then they're kind of hooked forever. We just heard that in the psych armor. It's the same thing. The psych armor episode, which was out this week as well. So great stuff. So, so, so we're super excited to have you here. And anytime we can put a plug in for ABI, I always, we always want to do that as well. Jathan, you, your background's a little different. Obviously you were in, you were both, yep. you and I were out by 2003. We're both yep. Navy veterans. Yep. So 
course, that is the, the number one branch out of service. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, talk to us how long you've been in this role now. It goes so fast. And what you do with Home Base Iowa? Yeah, so I started in this role just at the start of the pandemic. So I... I so um i'm trying to think of timeline so i've been here for a, for a, for a minute i uh prior to this role i worked in kind of higher education yep. space where i um at isu yeah that's right i gotta uh do what i love doing which is provide a better environment for our brothers and sisters um so that's really been kind of my story ever since i transitioned out of the military myself um, I saw a, 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 maybe a need, a gap at the time. We had a lot of brothers and sisters that were returning, and um, it wasn't my plan to be. You know, I was kind of done with that part of my life, but yeah. um, that's what I've been doing for uh, my entire professional life yeah. is really trying to work here on the home front. So um, that was just a continuation of my military service in a way was for me to kind of keep giving back. Yeah, for sure. And and I should mention, I was a flight deck in the Navy since it is Veterans Day. Uh, yeah. Jathan uh, was a SEAL, so you got a little bit of different representation from that branch today. And and as we go through this, you know, we were talking about the partnerships and how we're helping businesses, da 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 And a lot of this, was we were talking about before, just kind of set the scene, we're, we're working towards and, and doing some different things down the road as well, which kind of leads to that first question. Becky, let's come to you. How has ESGR partnered or, or changing that evolution of partnering with Home Base Iowa to build relationships with employers in Iowa? And I should say, website for ESGR is esgr.mil and home base Iowa spelled out dot gov for home base Iowa. Sorry, that was a lot with that question, but talk to us about some of those partnerships. We'll start with you. Well, way back when HBI first began, um, we actually partnered quite often with different events across the state yep. as yep. they were trying to gain those partnerships uh, with counties, city leadership. Um, so we would co present uh, different events. Uh, for example, one of those is called um, Briefing with the Boss, mm -hmm. uh, where we would invite business leaders into a lunch and learn yep. and talk about the different resources available to them, especially in the height of our deployments, to help them understand USERA, the Uniformed Services Employment Reemployment Rights Act, but yep. other resources that were available to them when they have um, their em military employees returning home from deployments, et cetera. And it really fit really well for us to work together on bringing those business leaders to the table, um, but the, also presenting them with um, um, an agenda that was meaningful to them at the yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, Jathan, you know, you know, talk to us as you've been in this role to come out of the pandemic, what we're looking to do with that relationship as well. Yeah, well, I mean, ESGR is a phenomenal resource. A lot of our staff, our career planners, if there is a, you know, a, a guard member that's maybe – um, there's a challenge or whatever we're often referring them to ESGR. I also just want to say, you know, one of our big goals is really helping Iowa businesses work towards becoming veteran ready companies or, yeah. you know, we want to provide those tools where they know what steps they can take to becoming more competent when it comes to hiring veterans or families. ESGR does a phenomenal job. You know, they have a whole awards program. Right. But what's meaningful to me about that is that's very much driven by those you know, guard men and women that are working for those companies, they're doing that self-nomination. And I, I think it's a really meaningful program, but it's very much aligned with what we're trying to do, which is really strive for that greater sense of excellence when it comes to supporting um, veterans, transition service members, and of course, um, their families. Yep. That includes our guard, yeah, guard that, men and women. Absolutely. And we should say, you know, Kathy Anderson now works for Iowa Workforce Development and she was part of the implementation for Home Base Iowa, mm -hmm. so we've come full circle. So we've we've got a lot of really great pieces here. You mentioned the veteran ready, Jathan. I'll come back to you, Becky, on that topic. How how is or how can ESGR and HBI help educate employers about hiring and retaining those employees who are, who are also guard or reserve members? You know, we the state of Iowa is, is gets lost in the shovel of this, but we run we are the, no different. You know, what can we learn from this as well as an agency? Uh, to, to, to bring folks on that are in these opportunities and, and how can it help businesses? How can businesses find out more about that? Well, I think, you know, with ESGR, we're actually more of a currently serving organization and, and assist uh, military members that are still in uniform and serving. And I think we can really 
uh, match each other well with the veteran population and what we do as a currently serving organization yeah. and connecting business leaders with a workforce they may not understand how to plug into yeah. and how can we better build those relationships and partnerships across Iowa with those local armories yeah. and helping them understand hey this is what we need as a, a force a workforce at the armory within these uh, military members and then employers understand how can we work together to match your workforce do you feel like um business owners hr reps whoever's the talent acquisition within the companies for forget about these opportunities don't know about them as a little bit of everything what do you think because we hear this on other fronts as well i didn't know that registered apprenticeship was a deal well you know we try to get it out there as much as we can where do you think, how can we get more information out there about that? And, and that's for either one of you. I just feel like as you pr create this portfolio of opportunities to hire different backgrounds, th this should be one of them. And we've talked about this on, on a previous episode. I just, you know, how do we get more information out there to, the, to those business owners? I think if once we work with the local armories and yeah. leaders there, yep. that we really target within that basic community um, those HR professionals or even their their CEO presidents on hey we want to figure this out together mm -hmm, right. and build that partnership versus just flooding them with information <laughs> right. just like you and I you yeah, know our uh, emails get flooded with information yeah. that you you have to pick and choose what's important what's not right. but once we um, target and extend personal invitations yeah. uh, I think we're going to have much more <laughs> effective programming. Yeah. And, and making those connections and partnerships happen. Yeah, very good. You agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And I can I can say, you know, one of the, um, I guess, program enhancements or one of the things I'm really appreciative is we, we onboarded some HBI career planners that do that yep. nuanced work. And so yep. we have one of our HBI career planners that's located on Camp Dodge, you know, participating in the patching ceremony, career fairs, the work that's being done there. We're already seeing the benefits from that. And yeah. I think there is a wide range. I mean, I, I talk all day long about best practice. I know we'll probably get to that, yeah. like of what companies can do, but just being there and sort of being present and some of these companies really understand just by showing up, you know, by starting to talk with those young men and women, you know, showing, you know, and learning, learning about steps that they can take I mean it's making a difference and we are really expanding that out across the the state in terms of how we're, we're connecting and so yeah yeah go ahead yeah. and I think that some are most of the time um, employers forget to look at their current workforce sure yeah absolutely. a lot of them have totally. no idea who are veterans within yep. their organizations right. right and I think they need to figure that out yep. and those veterans and currently serving yep. can help them make those connections as well yeah. and I and I, I'm always surprised by how often when I suggest well have you talked to your veterans <laughs> yeah. the look on their face is like I never thought of them <laughs> right you know? sure an obvious <laughs> win it, right Becky's still in my thunder because I'm gonna say <laughs> I 100% agree with you yeah. no I really do because you know I've spent a lot of times like in veterans affairs and trying to you know reframe things from this sense you know this this uh, disparity or this sort of like mm -hmm. you know veterans you know like these stereotypes that we sometimes ha have right yeah. it's sort of seeing the strength and like when we invite veterans into our classrooms whether it's at the university or we, we bring them into our, our places of work our communities they strengthen our places of work they strengthen our communities and so very often when I'm talking with companies for the first time I'm saying have you ever just invited your veterans and, and family members ask them yeah. what's meaningful about working here what are some things we can do and I think that's really that start where you could easily set up a mentorship program there is no veteran that I've ever met and I'm careful not to make generalizations <laughs> but I think one of the things that's very common, right, is that we, uh, one of the things that was valuable about, about serving was being part of something larger than yourself. Sure. So any veteran that I've met, if they know they can make a better environment for their future brothers and sisters, they are on board. Mm -hmm. And companies, just by simply inviting them into that conversation, getting their feedback, um, it's a game changer. Yeah. It's a first step very often. Yeah. And I think we can work with military command too to help inviting those. Well, that was my next yeah. question, you know, which is the military personnel talk to us about that if you don't mind. How does how can we do, how can we increase that? What are your thoughts there? 
Well, I think that we just connect, yeah. uh, help the military uh, leadership understand that by inviting them into your workspaces, yep. into your armories, yep. you're adding value to not only what your mission is, right. but then your new recruits coming in the door, yep. you know, helping them find that career that is meaningful to them. Right. Um, and I think a lot of military, our b- business leaders don't have a clue that, you know, there's a certain um, workforce that's coming out yeah. of active yeah. duty, full-time d- military yep. service that are looking for that next career, that next chapter in their life, because they're not ready to retire, sure. retire yet. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of look at it as uh, it in thirds. There's going to be a third that have no interest in continuing to work after they um, retire out of active guard reserve after sure. having served for 30 years. Yep. And you have another two thirds that I think that are still looking for that opportunity. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that, that folks who aren't familiar with the military, they just don't understand how it all works. They get confused by the guard, to be honest. I think, I, I don't know what your yeah, thoughts no, are. Yeah, no, and I think that I have not really, um, it's not been an experience where I haven't seen a company that wants mm-hmm. to do the right thing or wants to do it. I think sometimes it's just knowing yeah, no, where wow. to begin and how, and we are here. I yeah. mean, if that's the call to action, it's reach out to us. Yeah. We want to provide this sort of, these these ideas for what they can do. And sometimes it's just those simple steps forward. I mean, there's some great programs out there that companies can leverage. I mean, um, it, HBI is one of them when sure. you get into the community incentives that companies yeah. can be leveraging those in terms of their own recruiting strategies. So yeah. um, definitely, I think that uh, we have a great opportunity here. And one of the things that ESGR does really well is our boss lift and civic leader events. Yeah, yeah. Um, talk and to us about that. Yeah. So we invite so civic leader events are at the local armories where we invite local community business leaders to that armory, do again like a lunch and learn, but have them talk to military leadership at those events yeah. to talk more about their mission and yeah. skill sets. Yeah. Um, and that's where HBI will be it will be a huge partner with mm-hmm. us in helping make sure that we have the right business leaders invited to those events right. to talk about, you know, what is it that you need for workforce? Again, um, I know I mentioned this earlier and what the military needs, because honestly, they're all having a recruitment issue and a retention issue. Yeah, for sure. So how can they come together to, to help resolve that? Well, and you mentioned the career planners at the beginning. And, and if you want more information on Home Base Iowa, you certainly can go to homebasehighway.gov. Jathan's got more stuff out there. Just search HBI in the first 20 episodes of this podcast. There's, we really break it down. Those planners on bases, though, and around those armies, that's really going to help us no, and that's a piece that really we didn't have in the best that's within the last 12 months. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think providing that nuanced support to, you know, our we're here to help, uh, you know, veterans, transition service members and spouses find meaningful employment in Iowa. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes that could be just some help with resume. I mean, I always push this idea of 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 even career exploration. Right. Like, yeah. you know, sometimes I think we you know, we think we need to go in, into something based on what we did in the military and and. You know, veterans are highly trainable. Companies that get that really understand that um, what you're getting is you're getting somebody that's loyal, that's, you know, uh, mission focused, it's a good team player. And so they can provide some of that training. Um, And so I guess uh, what we do is we have HBI career planners um, that really can walk them through, get them connected with the wide range of resources that are offered through our Iowa Work Centers. Um, And I could really go on there, but it's it really comes down to that. We're here to help them connect with uh, uh, their next career. And before I, before I forget to ask this, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Becky, I just want to make sure we get out there. If folks want to get in touch with a career planner, where do we send them? Where do we want to send them? Yeah, I would send them to homebaseiowa.gov. Okay. Okay. Um, that's definitely, but also email hbi at iowa.gov. We make it, make it really easy to connect with us. Um, we love having somebody at Camp Dodge because many of our military folk, you know, that haven't, you know, it's, it's just really, there's something... If you've been out for a while, it's nostalgic. They can yeah. get connected. And really, we're getting them connected uh, with a wide range of resources there. So. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Were we going to add something on earlier? Uh, yeah. Well, so we already have civic leader events that yeah. are set up, uh, four of them, between uh, November 15 okay. and May. Uh, around the state. Um, so ESGR is broken up into nine areas. Yep. And I've also tasked our area leadership that if they don't have a, a, a senior leader from the National Guard that is going to be 
uh, in their area that they need to schedule one. Okay. So for example, we'll be in Fort Dodge, we'll be in Iowa City, um, Waterloo, and I forgot the other one that are planned where National Guard senior leaders will be visiting already. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we're going to have uh, folks hopefully have a flight on um, whatever military aircraft that the the, the general's flying in yeah, on at the same that, time. That's awesome. If folks want to find out more information about those entities, just send them to the website, esgr.mil? Uh, send them to the website okay. or um, and our uh, full-time support staff, Dave Mitchell. Mm -hmm. His phone number and email is all listed there. Yeah, got it. Awesome. Okay, great. Good deal. All right, so we've kind of touched on this, but talk to us about the, the third mission for you guys, which is that mediation. You know, that's one of the things that we wanted to bring up. We were putting these questions together. Talk to us about what that means and what that is. Well, mediation. So in the event that we have an employer that potentially has infringed on the rights of a service member yep. or the USERA rights, yep. uh, a service member then uh, will lodge a complaint or a case and our ombudsman, trained ombudsman, uh, will contact that uh, employer and figure out is there really an infringement on you, Sarah, yeah. or is there simply an education that has to be done? For sure. Um, most often, um, it's that frontline supervisor that has those deadlines and commitments. <laughs> right. And when when a then military when yeah. a military member leaves for military duty, yeah. uh, then they're stuck. Right. And then what do I do? You know. Those uh, employers that have the biggest commitment and hire the most military are fire departments and law enforcement. Yeah. Um, and it's not always on purpose that they infringe on you, Sarah. But, right. you know, it's our job then as a free resource sure. uh, for our folks to um, help them through that process. Yeah. Iowa, I will tell you, Iowa employers do a great mm. job of supporting their yeah. military employees yeah. and provide above and beyond um, benefits most often. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm going to just throw out, I think ESGR does, does a phenomenal job of getting on the front end of that. Anytime that we can have that education piece that we can let people know, again, I think companies are wanting to do the right thing. I mean, we're seeing companies go above and beyond. I mean, mm -hmm. the fact that they have a, you know, a member of the Iowa National Guard that deploys and makes, you know, less money um, through the military, th that company will match that so that there's no loss of, sure. of income. I mean, there's some phenomenal examples of that. So, but I, I want to really give a shout out. I think, I think um, Iowa, we talked about this, Ryan, it, it looks different, right? Yeah, in terms right. of our military population. Right. But, and, and so that, that role that ESGR does is huge in terms of education. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, and it's just great information. Any, anything else you want to yeah, add? And our, our ombudsman will also work with companies yeah. if they need to revise their HR policy yeah. on their military leave yeah. or just review it to make sure it's compliant with you, Sarah. Sure. Uh, and then again, that's a free service. Yeah. We're willing to do that. And, and I just want to do a shout out to Steve Olson as well. Yeah, with the, the department, great Steve Olson. With the Department yeah. of Labor Vets. Yep. Uh, yep. We, we reach out to him if there's a specific question that we're not exactly sure how to answer. Yeah, and Steve was on just a few episodes ago, so make sure to check that out with Jamie Norton. So we're very lucky to have everybody that's been on this week, and obviously including you two that is so um, pro-veteran on all this. Well, okay, in the interest of everybody's time, I want to, I want to get to one more. I, I wa how can – Employers get involved with the SGR, and then we'll talk. We'll talk about how they can get involved with involved with HBI, and then anything else you want to add. We'll start with the SGR first. You bet. So we have a statement of support program, um, very similar to signing on with HBI, but with the statement of support, it's simply just you know we acknowledge that we're going to follow you, Sarah, and yep. we're going to support yep. our military. Um, um, employees uh, in our workforce as well as in our communities. Um, we also are always looking for volunteers to support our mission of employer outreach, military outreach, and ombudsman. Yep. Um, we need volunteers yeah. um, to do what we do best and uh, recognizing employers for what they do and ensuring that they understand the law uh, on both sides, sure. the employee and the, the employer. Yeah. Um, so uh, we would love to have um, more volunteers, obviously. And <laughs> we were talking about this before, so we're laughing about it. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's how we would love to have uh, any employer also that would want to uh, attend any one of our civic leader events. Yeah. Let us know, and we'll get you on our list. Okay, and if they want to volunteer, use Dave's email. Correct. We're plugging Dave here pretty bad, yeah. but but that's okay. If that's what his yep. information out there yep. for. Okay. Yep, it's on ESGR.mil, and then uh, select the state pages okay. mm -hmm. to awesome. find his information. Awesome. Great stuff. Yeah, Jay. Yeah, I mean, that, that uh, ESGR letter of support it happens to be part of our new onboarding process. So yeah. when we're out there and we're working with companies that, you know, really want to take that next step, we're kind of asking because we see the value in that as a best practice. Right. So we want to see them, and that gives us an opportunity to 
then to do a nice referral to ESGR to Dave Mitchell over. Um, and yeah, so uh, that's exciting. Yeah, a lot of great information. I could talk to you guys all day long. I do want to make sure this one all gets on the video caption as well. Uh, again, folks, happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day, Veterans Day to you guys. Thank you very both for, very much for making time. Excuse me, tongue-tied. Um, great information. I think this is really the, the crux of this one is really about how just everybody's willing to share information with employers to help them be successful with these hires over and over and over. Um, and uh, it's just a great opportunity. Wealth of information, great websites. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Becky Cody, who is the state chair for ESGR. A lot, and also with ABI, the great ABI, and Jathan Jaconi, who is our home base Iowa program manager here at Iowa Workforce Development. Thank you both for making time.